Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I saw a quote come through my feed by Dr. Mike Isriatel. Uh, so let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this quote. Because Dr. Mike broke down and said, look, you never ever for anything do you use a single study to draw any sort of conclusion. You, you don't base a single study as, as your sole evidence for anything that you attempt to do, a supplement you take, a training program you do, a diet you do, uh, pretty much anything, even a medication you choose to take. You would never base this off of a single study. All right, he's like, you have to look at the sum total conclusion of the evidence. You've got to look at all the studies done. In fact, that's where meta-analysis comes in. Meta-analysis usually looks at all the studies done on a given uh, topic and tries to draw meaningful conclusions from all the various data, figure out why there's conflicts, everything else. Uh, why maybe even they're studying something different than they thought they were, and that's why they get different conclusions. And uh, he's like, look, that's what you have to do if you want to actually get anything that's a meaningful answer. And in fact, if there's less than five studies even being done on something, if you can't find at least five good studies on a topic, don't waste your time looking at them. You will probably, you're probably just as well off going with anecdote, conjecture, um, your own theories or whatever are probably just as valid uh, of a conclusion to, to draw things from uh, than the studies if there's less than five studies on something. All right, and that's uh, really a good point. And this is coming from a professor. He's a professor of kinesiology. So he's saying that, and a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean? That's That can't be right. There's this study or that. And it's like, yeah, but you're looking at single studies. And I'm going to give you guys in the fitness world, uh, different aspects of the fitness world here. I'm going to give you guys three perfect examples of things touted right now that people use that have less than five studies confirming it, or sometimes only one study, and people draw their own conclusions. And sometimes their conclusions don't even equal uh, what the study was actually studying. And that's the, the interesting part there. All right, I'll give you guys three perfect examples. Stuff that people make YouTube videos on right now. There are fitness YouTubers who cover these things. Uh, number one, how about deaspartic acid as a testosterone booster? Uh, anyone care to guess how many successful studies there are on that? Not many. You know what? There's more studies showing it doesn't boost testosterone than there's studies showing that it does. What? This is sold as a test booster. That can't be true. It is true. That's the truth. And so people who are taking it, who feel like they're getting a test boost, uh, you know what? It's probably just placebo. Probably just placebo. Because the amount it's claimed to boost testosterone in the one successful study probably isn't enough for you to really notice or feel it. Now, what do I mean by the one successful study? There was only one real study done that had meaningful amounts of testosterone boosting, and that was done on Italian endurance athletes. A bunch of Italian cyclists were given deaspartic acid, and it noticeably, noticeably boosted their testosterone for a few hours after they took it. The problem with that is that it hasn't been replicated in other studies. There have been several other studies done that found that it didn't really do anything, no meaningful uh, increase in testosterone. Now, here's the other big kicker. A lot of people look at that and go, well, it did at least boost theirs. Well, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Uh, we don't know what else was going on with these athletes. Um, number two, it was a pretty short-lived boost. Yeah, it was like a 30% boost in testosterone, uh, but from where they were, a 30% boost in testosterone, uh, particularly only for part of the day, how much muscle do you think that's going to put on you? None. It's not going to put any muscle on you. This isn't, it's not enough of a boost to build muscle. And you know what? Even Ian McCarthy had said that years ago. He did a review of that study, and I recall him saying the same thing. This, this isn't enough to actually make you gain muscle. Uh, so it's being sold as a product, but it wouldn't be enough boost even if this study had been replicated. And it doesn't seem to actually be true. It doesn't seem to work. But even if this study had been replicated over and over and other studies had found similar findings, people aren't taking it to boost their testosterone. Okay, they think they are. Look, I'm taking the test booster to boost my test. Why are you boosting your test? Are you having trouble getting an erection? Uh, when you're trying to have a threesome with two girls, can you not get a heart on? Like that, that's not even enough to stimulate you? Okay, so you need to boost your test. Oh, it's not because of that. So why else would you be wanting to boost testosterone? To build muscle. To build muscle and maybe to burn a little fat, and it's not a very good fat burner. So to build muscle, well, that's not enough to actually 
increase muscle. So the study didn't study what you were looking for. You were looking for muscle gains. The study measured short-term test boost. It wasn't a study to see if it put muscle mass on people. There's no way it's going to put muscle mass on people, even if the study were true on the testosterone. See the problem, but people will base stuff off of one study and then they'll draw conclusions from it that aren't even meaningful. So what if something boosted testosterone? What if it doesn't boost it enough to build muscle? If you're not using it for uh, better sex performance, what's the point of boosting testosterone other than to build muscle? There's no other real reason you're going to be doing it. Uh, particularly if it's being sold as a workout supplement, am I right? All right, uh, what else? How about blood flow restriction training? Oh, there's a big one. Wait, all these uh, evidence-based guys do blood flow restriction training. Uh, Alberto Nunez does blood flow restriction. Lane Norton does blood flow restriction. Um, the only real meaningful study that showed gains from it, the problem is the controls put in place weren't actually good enough. What do I mean? Uh, I've said this before. All it did was give you the same results I would expect from previous studies that had been done uh, using really high rep training with light weights. All they did was compare blood flow restriction to like standard hypertrophy range training to see if they produced uh, similar metabolites and they did with the ultra light weight for high reps with the uh, blood flow restriction bands on. But they didn't compare it to doing high reps with really light weight without the bands. So we have a single study showing that it produces similar metabolites in the bloodstream which are indicative of an anabolic response. That's not proof of anabolic response, it's indicative of it. All right, it suggests it. it. Means it probably is causing muscle gain. Probably. Which probably, okay, that's pretty good. That's better than, than saying it doesn't. Uh, probably causes as much muscle gains as the hypertrophy range work. But we only compared it to hypertrophy range work. There was another study that had been done a year before that showed that doing really lightweight for ultra high reps to failure also caused similar anabolic metabolites to do in normal training. See the problem there? We didn't get a head to head comparison. How about we compare really lightweight for high reps with bands and without bands? That study's never been done. And you know what? We probably need to do it at least five times before it's good evidence. So again, another example of something that's not proven to work. All that showing is is that the blood flow restriction could be equal to hypertrophy range work. Now, it didn't compare it to doing the same sort of training without the band. So we don't have an apples to oranges comparison. It might turn out that doing the exact same thing without the bands causes more muscle gains. We don't know because it's not been studied. Furthermore, these aren't studies in muscle growth. These aren't like long-term studies where we've looked at for six months straight to see which group actually gained more muscle. That's what we actually need. We need five studies doing that before we can actually say blood flow restriction works, yet everyone's pimping it. Tons of people are out there pimping the programming. Why? There's not enough evidence. The evidence isn't even that, that can compelling. We need more studies. Again, you don't base something like this, a, a ridiculous looking training method like this. It carries risks off of a single study. Why would you do that? Particularly when there's other studies that might suggest that uh, it, it's not that great that the bands themselves might not be even doing anything. But we have to actually study that further. All right, another perfect example. How about the one the vegans all cling to? Dr. Campbell's research from 60 or 70 years ago on rats. A single study he did on rats showing that casein protein caused cancer in rats. He found an enormous correlation uh, to the point to where he felt he could prove causation. Never been replicated in humans. It's a single study. And this guy, because he's a very passionate lecturer in the vegan circles, the vegans cling to it. Uh, this study hasn't been found to be true in humans. There's been no studies in humans showing a correlation between animal protein intake and cancer in humans. In fact, vegans get cancer at the same rate that meat eaters do. So how is it that the animal proteins are the cause of cancer? It can't be or vegans wouldn't be getting cancer at the same rate everyone else is. But that single study, single study is upheld as gospel by the vegans, including vegan gains. He, he holds on to that one. But it's not supported by the rest of the data out there. This isn't supported by the sum of the scientific literature. 
You see the problem here, guys? You see the problem at this point when you look at this stuff and you take a single study instead of looking at a full meta-analysis that looks at 20 or 25 studies and analyzes the differences between them to find the truth? You have to look at all the available data. You can't just pick one study, particularly when there's very few studies done on a topic, and particularly when there's only one that prove your case. If there's three or four others existing that show that it's not true, you're really in trouble when you've only got one. Um, it's not a wise way to go about getting information. Don't ever use just a single study uh, to base your own decisions on, whether it's to purchase a product or to change your diet or your training. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.